Alright well, folks, we got it all torn apart here. Tomorrow morning I'll come back in. We'll, we're going to pressure wash this cover off, get it all cleaned up. Actually, not tomorrow morning. I'm going back to Grenada in the morning to work on a 4230 John Deere and an 8360, um, 8360 New Holland. So anyway, uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do tomorrow morning. So I forgot I had to call Ruth back there at Kenworth and get the cover. I forgot I, I forgot to get the two front cover bolts there for the where they you know they, they still got the idler goes over here now. This used to be on the old CM871s and stuff where the other where the injector cam was, but the common rail motors they still use that cover there, but they, they put an idler there is what they did. So anyways, I gotta clean that up and then i told her to order this hose right here this i was grabbing this hose to get the elbow off the the uh off the bottom of the blow by filter and that sucker's brittle and it just broke on me so plastic but no we got a bunch of cleanup to do there so anyways we got her all gutted i think what i'm gonna do now is uh it's it's only about 4 30 i'm gonna go over there and start working on that 4455 i've got all the parts i think to get that done so anyways we got this one torn down we'll come back uh maybe wednesday and start getting her cleaned up and put her back together hopefully ruth finds that hopefully they got those in stock if not i'll be gone tomorrow and she can order them hopefully they'll be in uh the next day when i get ready to put it back together so Okay, YouTube, we're putting the ISX back together. I got the front cover back on it. Uh, I got to pull this brace back off. I didn't want to leave it setting last night with it on the jack, so I just bolted it back on her before I went home and set her back down on the cross member. Anyhow, put your cover, you know, get it all cleaned up. Put your cover back on and torque these bolts here on the... You know, there's bolts here on the outside too, and then the inside bolts, and, and then there's the special bolt, you know, it says right there, special bolt. Oh, uh, let's see here. I'm trying to remember the torque. They were 40, 41 foot-pounds, and then plus 30 degrees. And this one here is 41 foot-pounds without 30 degrees. Don't do, torque 30 degrees on that one. Just 41 foot pounds. Put some blue Loctite on there so the some bitch don't back out. Get into that idler gear. And then we uh, we put the put the front main seal in it with the seal installer, which is what tool group? I don't even remember what tool group that is. This one right here, Cummins. Look at that. Uh, don't tell you the part number there on it, does it though? Oh yeah, it does. OEM number reference 491. 8991 that's the tool group i got the rear seal installer in there too but it's almost critical you got that on these but there as i showed trent how to put one of these on and how to use the tool and he sees now that it's it's it presses on there so far and it's so tight on these it it's almost critical to have that tool uh so anyhow now I had to get a new blow-by tube here. It went in the blow-by filter because the sucker was all brittle and kept breaking every time I touched it and breathed on it the wrong way. So, um, we got to put that on there. We got a new air compressor as well. But what we're going to do now is stick the common rail pump back in it. Um, and I got the common rail pump timed. I need to pull these up here or something out of my damn way, but... Maybe I can get her fish down through there, maybe. Get that one over there out of the way. And here's a common rail pump. And just for reference for somebody who hasn't done it. Um, special tool. Cummins 5572562. So, there's two down. Okay, before the camera fell off the tool cart and fell on the ground and knocked the battery out of it uh what i was saying was to time i gotta put a plug in here i like to pull the fuel control actuator out of the back of the pump because it's plastic and when you're wrestling them in there they'll break break the connector off or something and that sucks because it's like 300 bucks
pulling that off before I wrestle it down in there. That is not big enough. So I need a bigger plug for that. An old plug in there. Okay, on this pump here, these commoner pumps, to time them. They, they're timed. I don't care what these guys say on the internet, they're timed. Okay, it tells you right in the Cummins literature on QuickServe to time the pump. So, this special tool here is 5572562. You'll see it says XPI down here and see the bolt in the pump. You'll just rotate the pump till that bolt hole lines up with the closest bolt, closest to the inside of the, towards the block. Sorry, this thing's got a, one of the ears is right on the bottom and it don't set up very square. And that'll line up with that bolt and then bolt the timing tool down to it so it'll stay still and then put the pump in. So let me, uh, I gotta get a plug to fit this actuator hole so I don't get a bunch of shit in it when I get it on, when I'm putting it on. Alright, I'm gonna wrestle her back in there. Then I gotta throw the gasket on. I'll put the gasket on it later. It's easier to put it on when you get it in there. sure my ceiling surface where the gasket mounts is clean. I cleaned it once, but darn it, I don't have a rag on me. Let me go get a shop towel. Damn, pump's kind of a heavy, awkward son of a gun to deal with really it's not very light all right here we go so i'm trying to think what would be the best way ass in first i guess maybe quite a bit easier with that gear pump off the back of it. Let me get the gasket. Get a new gasket for it. Alright. It should go on there like that. Yeah. Like a soul. Gasket to stay put though. Really nice. Oh, I'm in the wrong. <laughs> I gotta go down to the bottom hole. I'm in the wrong place here, dumbass. Trying to stick an air compressor hole. Oh, that frickin' line right there. Always in the way. <clears throat> Damn it. Here and there's a so you can't can't put this bolt in yet here because it goes over this cover. So you got to put the this one here in and the one on the bottom. So that's what I got to do next. I got to climb under there and put the one in the bottom. Okay. Here we go.
hell of a lot easier putting these air compressors on with the engine out of it. Somebody will say, somebody will say, why are you putting a new air compressor in that truck engine? You should buy a whole reman engine because the air compressor went bad. I'm just waiting for it. I'd have just put a new engine in it. Not really, that's that's what some of you some bitches say on here. You'll do something like this, and I'll go, I don't know why you did that, just put a new engine in there. Okay. Okay, so what do we got going on here? Make sure shit's looking right. There's that hole right there. And then the oil feed hole is lined up. So we should be good to go. We just slide her on in there. I look in here like I can see something right here. <laughs> ah. Look what we done. We done it. Ain't scared neither. Okay. What do I do with that spacer and that nut? I know I probably just. What the hell do I do with this? Okay, I got. Pretty much the gear train all put together. I didn't show the rest of it. I'm going to explain to you what I did. But the reason I didn't show it is I really was trying to take the time to explain to Trent what we were doing. The only thing I have left to do is unload the scissor gear. Uh, but I was trying to stress to him the importance on these ISXs. I really wanted to drive the point home of the making sure the ID of the cam gear was clean. And then make sure the OD of the cam gear and tell him to explain the difference between a straight throw, anything that's got a straight throw pressed on type of gear versus a tapered gear and how a tapered gear can break loose, things like that. I was trying to explain to him and then we were putting all this together and, you know, the it, this upper or the camshaft adjustable idler gear and we set the backlash. So I'll go over that with you. So you, I on this particular engine, some of these... Some of these engines had this gear that was adjust, or I'm wrong on that. Some of them had an adjustable fuel pump idler gear. And then the older engines, a lot of them had this gear here was adjustable. Okay. But this one's not. Okay. The, this one's the adjustable gear here. This camshaft idler adjustable gear. And those, those plates back here, you want to make sure that, you know, they're lined up the right way. Because I was trying to explain to him, I mean... It's kind of hard to, to to misalign it, I think, to me. But um, anyway, if, if it was misaligned there, you know, they always tell you in the book here, don't misalign it because you'll plug up this oil drain hole in the head and the head won't drain the oil out of it. So anyway, so I was explaining that to him, going over all that and how to set up the backlash. And I'm going to go over it here. So anyway, you know, put this one on here, the scissor gear uh we'll, board, we'll torque down 52 foot pounds and then 60 degrees and this one's 65 foot pounds plus 60 degrees and then put this one on here make sure that all this stuff's right because the inside of the behind this plate is marked uh oil pan make sure you know facing towards the oil pan same thing with the gear when you put it on there these here will line up, you know with the this idler here the upper idler and this one will line up here and what these are these are these little the little arrow here is telling you what tooth to go into, but the little hash mark here, the straight dash mark, is telling you what side you, they want of that gear tooth they want you to put your feeler gauge on. So, you know, I think a lot of guys would get confused what side of the feeler gauge to put on. Anyway, so when you set that up, leave, tighten these up by hand and back them off one flat, and then clean your gear up, the ID of your gear, and then put the clean the OD of your gear up, and then slide your, put your, I, I use bearing mount on there. I use green bearing mount. You know, Cummins has a different thing they put on there, but I've used green bearing mount on. I haven't had one come apart yet. I'm not saying I probably won't, but uh, I've never had one come apart. Uh, anyway, I put green bearing mount on there, and then I slide the cam gear on, and then I uh, put my tone wheel on, so it's, don't take these torx head bolts out. Just take the center bolt out. The center bolt out and the whole tone wheel will come off. And the tone wheel has a dowel on it that will stick into the nose of the cam to line it up right. And then leave those loose. Tighten that one up. Back it out one flat. 
and then get your feeler gauges this one here we set it up at four thousandths so put a feeler gauge right here and then set another feeler gauge another four thousandths feeler gauge right here and then take this gear here and move it towards the center of the engine just by hand until you get a slight drag on both feeler gauges and then what I do is I just got my little impact it's a little electric and then I just kind of barely run them up to where my everything stays steel and then you torque this one 22 foot pounds then you torque this one 22 foot pounds and you go back over this one here and you go 60 degrees on these three bolts and then that's it for that one and then this one over here you're going to go to 75 foot pounds and then you're going to go 120 degrees and then you're done the only thing you got left to do now is turn these clockwise to load the scissor gear again and these are torqued to like 21 foot pounds i'll have to look it up again i think they're 21 foot pounds but then that's pretty much it so now we're gonna we're gonna turn these clockwise back in uh, load the scissor gear and then we gotta peel this rubber out of here and put a new one of those in and then put the outer timing cover on and then i gotta tighten up this uh, crankshaft speed sensor put that back in there and then we can get this sucker put back together and get done with it so anyways that's what I'm going to be doing I'll probably I probably won't show a whole lot more on this one uh, until I go to start it I mean there really ain't much left I mean the thing that you got to do now I get once I get the outer cover on I got to come back here and put take my timing tool off the common rail pump and then put the a new o-ring on the gear pump and put it on the back of the common rail pump and then just basically your your pump and everything got to put the pressure line back on the back of the steering pump and got to flop the power steering reservoir back up and bolt it in put the suction line on and then uh plumb the air compressor looks like i kind of got this lined up pretty good when i put that on there how about the where is the uh oh right here right in front of me damn i got lucky i was just kind of eyeballing that man you can't ask for more than that how about the coolant lines are they gonna go on there we could actually get this and go ahead and get this started can't believe i got that lucky So it's just really, you know, I was trying to explain to Trent. I said, I really want to teach you something because having you be more productive and knowing how to do all this stuff and having you better helps me too. You know, I, I work for, I work for a truck shop. When I first, when I first came back, I, I came back home. We were in Wyoming for a while working for an outfit called Black Hills Trucking and neither one of us really liked it there very much so we came back and anyway we came back and i got a job here in a local truck shop it was called at the time great basin truck repair and i don't know you know that i still get along with them guys but you know they they had their favorites you know and i guess i was young i didn't know anything really i mean i could i could do stuff but, but they stuck me in the lube bay and pretty just made me do wheel sills and brakes and i kind of got tired of that shit and i I uh, kind of made up a reason to leave, and I left. And I actually went out, and I went out, and I was driving bell wagon for a guy and hauling hay. And I was making more money hauling hay than coming out of a technical school with, with a degree in diesel diesel technology, which I guess you know to some of them guys don't mean nothing. Uh, but, uh, and I was making more money working for some farmer hauling hay than I was having to buy tools. And I, I at that time little bit of background on that you know I've I'm gonna go ahead and tell you I've had a lot of people ask me how I got started oh I'm just gonna tell you pretty much my life story <laughs> because it all revolves around how I got started okay so I was in the Navy for six years I, I had to go in the Navy because I was a hellraiser and I had a lot of let's put it this way I had a lot of warrants out for my arrest in different states <laughs> uh, I was in a lot of trouble and I pretty much had to go into the Navy or go to jail you know one of those deals and uh back then when i went in i i signed up and they basically took care of all my problems 
They really did. The U.S. Navy took care of all my warrants. And they weren't serious stuff. I mean, it was stupid stuff. I was a stupid kid. I was living in Texas working for an outfit. Well, working for a family member, roofing houses. And, I mean, I had, I had, I think, a minor in... Or no, we had an open container ticket in Mansfield, Texas, one night. And I didn't go to court on that. All these were failures to the peers. I just didn't go to court. I piss on them. I ain't going in there for that. Well... And uh, I think one of them was a no seat belt. I didn't go to court on that. And then another one was a, uh, in Texas, they have these things called inspection stickers. You had an annual inspection and they put a sticker on your window. And I didn't get an inspection and I got a ticket for that. And I didn't go to court for that. So anyways, I, I came back here trying to avoid all my troubles there, being a dumb kid and running from my problems and not just facing up to them. And, and, uh, anyway, uh, Decided to go in the Navy, and uh, went in the Navy, uh, did, I had, I, I signed up for four years with a one-year extension for, I'm trying to remember what I did the one-year extension for, it was basically a five-year stint, it was one, four years with a one-year extension for something, I don't remember what it was, but, uh, anyway, did my five years on, uh, I did, uh, most of my time on the ballistic missile submarine, the USS Alabama, SSBN 731 Gold Crew. I was a machinist mate, third class, um, uh, non-nuke, conventional, uh, commonly referred to as A-ganger. A-ganger stands for A-division, uh, and we all kind of stuck together. They called us A-gang. Anyway, uh, got out of the Navy and went to technical school in Wyoming up in Laramie to Wyoming Tech. And I got out of there and I went to work for Black Hills Trucking for probably not even a full year and decided to come back to Klamath Falls. Then I went to work for, uh, I went to work for this outfit called Great Basin Truck Repair. And I stayed there, I think maybe a year I was there and could see that that was never going to go anywhere because I didn't kiss everybody's ass and... I didn't, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't one of the, around here, this, this area is really bad. It's like a, a glorified, this whole area is like a big glorified area of, of who you know, you know, and it's almost like a bit, what, what can I say? It's like, it's like an older version of being in high school all the time about, it's about who you know and who, who's buddy with this guy and who's buddy with this guy. And that's what it's all about here. So anyways, I didn't know anybody up there in Klamath Falls. I knew a lot of people down here, down South. And, uh, anyways, it was never going to go anywhere, so I knew that. They stuck me in the lube bay, and I was just changing oil. It was all I was doing, and doing wheel seals, and doing some clutches, and it wasn't going anywhere. And So, anyways, I decided to go haul hay for the farmer, and I, I was hauling hay for a farmer. And, uh, some two old farmers that I grew up with over here, uh, Cross Brothers. I know this is kind of weird, but something happened to the rest of the clip here. I went to to look it's gone so anyway i gotta finish my story here so anyway um uh these two old farmers called me when i was hauling hay for this other farmer that were over in butte valley and they said hey there's a job over here for this strawberry nursery full-time mechanic uh they're going to pay you 2500 bucks a month they're going to provide a, a house for you to live in and uh a cell phone and a service truck and a shop and I thought, I'll be there tomorrow. So I worked for those guys for 10 years. And uh, that's probably where I learned everything that I've learned today was at that outfit. Because those guys could tear up an anvil with a Q-tip. And uh, there was a lot of stuff broken down. And they kind of let you do what you wanted and just let you fix it. And uh, kind of gave you free reign to do what you wanted. So I learned a whole lot. Sometimes at their expense, to be completely honest with you, because I didn't know some things and made mistakes. But anyways, I worked for them, and then uh, the owner of the company died, the old man, and then the kids took over. Let's just put it this way. I still talk to them. I don't want to run them down. But, you know, the the there was, there was a brother and sister. The brother I got along with great. The sister didn't get along with her at all. Let's just put it this way. She was a little bit left-leaning, and we didn't get along. So anyway, uh, that's when I went out on my own. And what I was trying to stress to you as I'm explaining this is the two shops that I did work for uh, that were actually mechanic shops, 
The one up in Wyoming, there was a guy there, got Black Hill shot. His name was RJ, and it was just an absolute arrogant, the shop foreman was an absolute arrogant royal prick. Just, you know, didn't want to teach you nothing. He was smarter than everybody else, and you don't deserve to know what he knows. And then, to be completely honest with you, I went to work up here in Klamath, and they were kind of the same way, just real arrogant, and, you know, were really proud, and walked around with their chest puffed out everywhere they went, you know, and never would teach anything, never would take the time to sit down and explain things to you. And I don't want to do that with Trent. I really like today, you know, on this uh, front gear train, we really went through this whole gear train step by step because I want him to do this stuff, you know. I want him, having him know more and giving him a chance to do this is going to make me more money. It's going to make him more money. It's going to be more. It's going to be better all the way around. So I never could figure out why these guys were like that. But anyways, it is what it is. Um, it's probably better off that all these things did happen to me. It made me who I am today. Um, but anyways, Trent, I think if Trent's going to really work out good. I, I sure I've got high hopes for him. He picks up on things really quick. Uh, the John Deere later the day he picked up really quick on the steering now and how I explained it worked to him So anyways, you guys now know how I got where I am as a self-employed independent mechanic All right, YouTube we gotta So buttoned up some things, but I just want to make sure it's gonna run Let me cycle the key again I'm gonna have a check engine light because it's a little cool on it Thing sounds kind of funny, didn't it? That lift pump. Never heard one that sounded like that. Ah. Well, I turned it over by hand with a three-quarter inch ratchet, made sure it would turn over, so. Here we go. Cranky, cranky, cranky. Shut her down. I don't got any water in it. I don't want to run it very long with no water going through that compressor, no water going through the water pump. Oh, air suspension started raising up, so it started rocking it off the jack stand. So I guess I better get the jack out from under it. All right, guys, so we got the coolant back in it. This hose here, I got a vacuum snap on vacuum puller here so it collapses hose up here but it'll get a little pressure on the coolant system there and it'll pop it back out of there we got some i just got off the phone with the owner and i told him i said we really need to fix this shit like this here these power the power and grounds going to the alternator over there rubbing on this metal hose with no split loom or nothing on that's just a disaster and a engine fire or a truck fire burning to the ground waiting to happen so let's, uh, I think we can fire it up. And then we put a new air compressor. Let's monitor that and make sure it's going to build air. Okay, there's our air gauges. Didn't have a coolant level because the sum of guns full everything to come out of it went back in it well, that's bullshit I don't know why it's doing that now yeah that went away okay that went away 
Now it's just tractor ABS, which was on before I messed with it. Where's the cruise at in this thing? A little pressure. Eh, it's about about 50 pounds. It's about normal. Secondary air is going up, which is normal. Feel the air suspension raising up on it. like this for five minutes and there was a pile of oil just a pile of oil on the ground underneath it up and dump the oil and change the oil and the filters on it after having it opened up and I wanted to just warm it up a little bit and get some of the stuff if anything that did fell down in the head basically wash it down to the pan and then dump it Hopefully this one don't go to shit like everything else has been going lately. 